welcome to Logan Sounds Off, where I talk about books, music, and a whole lot more. I'm your host, Logan Kelly. Well, hello, and welcome back to Logan Sounds Off. Today I am doing another album review on Stuck Together with God's Glue by Something Happens. This was released in 1990 by Virgin Records and the band members are Tom, who sang the vocals, Ray, who played the guitars and piano, Alan, who played the bass, and Eamon, who played the drums. The producer was Ed Stasium for all the songs apart from two, Uh, so he produced the album for uh, um, most of it. And then you've also got the mixer, who is Ed Stasium again. So I'm going to start off with side A, a brilliant side, my favourite side, um, with What Now. So I love this song and it had brilliant vocals uh, and it, ha- it was a brilliant start to the album. It really hooked me into it and originally when I began to listen to this album I didn't mind it but then I so- started to grow to love it and that's what I liked about this album. There were some songs on it that when I listened to first, I didn't really like it that much, but then I began to grow into it. Now, that was only on a couple of the songs, such as What, what Now and Brand New God. The rest were all brilliant. Um, but for them too, I like the way you can easily change your mind with it. That it's quite a good album for that. Then you've also got Hello, 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 Petrol. Um, don't ask me what the petrol's for, because I actually don't know. And um, I loved the guitar in this, um, and it was really catchy as well. It really ticked all the boxes for me, and that's what I like about a song. If a song is good, and it ticks only a couple of the boxes, that's not that great. But if it ticks all the boxes, that's very good. So a lot of the songs here, they ticked all the boxes. That they had powerful vocals, it was catchy, it had great lyrics, it had great drumming, it had pound, poundy bass. That That's what I like about these songs, that they tick a lot of the boxes. So that's really my way of thinking when I was listening to this album. Then you've also got Parachute, which had a great backing vocal and fantastic lyrics. It was definitely one of my favourites. A little story actually about the backing vocal. Um, I learned this at the Tom Dunn concert that I went to. Um, seeing that, sorry, been there, seeing that, done that, um, was the title of the concert, and I saw it in the Riverbank Theatre, um, it was brilliant. But he told us a little bit of a story about when Parachute was being made. I think it was Ray. I'm not sure it was learning the piano, so. He learned the piano anyways, and he came up with the parachute kind of melody, and he recorded it onto a four track for Tom to record his vocals onto anyways. So the first thing he did, he didn't do normal vocals. He didn't ask Alan to play the bass. He didn't ask Ray to do guitars for it. He didn't ask him to play the drums. He went and did a backing vocal. So when you've got a song with just a backing vocal, it's a bit weird. But that was his story, and I thought that was really cool. So I'll never forget that about the song Parachute. And then you also have Esmeralda, and the guitar at the start of this song was brilliant. Ray's guitars in this were amazing. He was using electric, he was using acoustic. It was very nice in that way, and I quite liked that. And then you also had I Had a Feeling. So this is harsh guitar at the start, actually. But when it got into it, it was great. Now, when I say harsh guitar, I say that kind of, how would I put this? I say it in a, not in a critic way and not in a critique way, but I think it was just harsh. It wasn't bad or anything. It was great guitar, but it was very kind of harsh. I think maybe the treble was up a lot, but it was still a great song. Come on, like it's, Nirvana is harsh, but... Do I like them? Yeah. So that's kind of my kind of theory. But anyways, uh, then you have Kill the Roses. So 
this had a lovely subtle guitar strumming at the start of the song and I like that. I like a little subtle kind of rhythm throughout the song and there's a lot to be said about a silent song that's not that's not big and powerful. Just look at Beethoven. He has some really relaxing songs. Uh, most classical music can be quite relaxing when you listen to it in the right environment. And come on, classical's a massive genre now of music. And think about it this way. The, I'm using Beethoven as an example. You could use thousands upon thousands of other brilliant mu musicians. But Beethoven comes to mind. He was from, like, what, the 1600s or something? He is timeless, and that music hasn't gotten old. So there's a lot to be said about the relaxing kind of vibe that they were putting throughout that song. Then you've also got Brand New God, which had a cool end to side A, and I really liked that. And also it was slightly funny in a way with the lyrics, but I liked the guitar in it a lot, and the little piano kind of bits and pieces throughout it. Then you've also got Room at 29. Such a brilliant song. It was definitely a fave and it was a great start to side A. Sorry, side B. God. <laughs> but little, a funny little story about this. Uh, one time, something happens. They had to go to Leeds for some reason. So this was another Tom Dunn story. So this is why you have to go to his concerts. You get these really good stories. But anyways... They had to go to this hotel called Clock Hotel in Leeds because they had to stay overnight, all right? And it was a bit of a mad hotel in Leeds, but they wrote a song about it, or Tom did. He wrote, like, lyrics to it. And one of the lyrics that I thought was very good was, Room 29, I can't get you off my mind. Room 52, I just can't get over you. That it talks about the whole Clock Hotel throughout it, so that's very cool. Then you also got the patience business, which was really good. And it follows on from room 29 amazingly. It's nice that way. And there's a lot of the songs here that will come to mind as like kind of nice transitional songs from really heavy stuff to nice slower stuff. And then you've also got the devil in Miss Jones. So this is, I don't know, is this a real scenario that actually happened is there a miss jones out there who had a bit of demons in her i don't know but funny lyrics anyways and great instruments throughout it and i really like that it's a good thing to have great instruments throughout a song it it it, it stands to you to have a good quality song you can have the best quality of sound in the world you can have mastered your song 20 times you could have it on Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of millions of vinyl and CD um, sent across the world. But if you have a nice kind of great instruments throughout it, that can sound to you as well. So that's what I liked about this song. Then you've also got Good Time Coming, which was the third last song in this, which is brilliant. And then you've got I Feel Good, which was a great song and I liked the lyrics. And also the vocals in this, I found they were very powerful and I've, I really like this song. And then you also had the concluding song, Skyrockets. So, the album cover itself. I've talked about the album cover in past interviews. It has to be iconic. This is completely iconic. It has roses on it for Kill the Roses. It is Room, room 29, the key for it on it. Now they're doodles. So that would be for, um, that would be for really room 29. And then you've also got, um, you've got a little religious book, which is for a brand new God. You've also got a parachute, which obviously for parachute. And then you've also got a petrol kind of thing with hello written on it. So that's pretty cool too. And then in the middle, yeah, something that happens stuck together with God's glue, an S in the top, the bottom left hand corner and H in the bottom right hand corner and it has a picture of all the guys and it's a pretty iconic album cover and I quite like it. So this album is definitely getting a five star from me. Well I hope you have enjoyed listening to my album review today. You should definitely get this album. It's a brilliant, 
brilliant album. I really like this. I have it on LP myself, thanks to my brilliant uncle, Eamon. And I actually got it signed by Tom Dunn. So thank you so much, Tom, for signing that for me. I am ever so grateful. So thank you so much for listening to my album review. And I hope you have a brilliant day. Goodbye. hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Logan Sounds Off. You can follow me on X, Facebook and Instagram at Logan Sounds Off. And don't forget to subscribe and not miss any more cool episodes. Bye guys!